Hey everybody, it's Professor Pound, and welcome back to more Let's Play Another Ocarina of Time. In the last part, we got started into the Fire Temple here. In this part, we're going to go much deeper into it, but first, I want to show you something real quick. You know this log I got stuck on last time? Yeah, you just had to walk up it to get off. Why I was too stupid to figure that out, I will never know. Probably will know, it's because I'm stupid, but whatever. Anyway, weird, considering how much time I spent calling Link an idiot in the last part, it's really kind of ironic that it was something so painfully simple. Maybe that's why we're not cooperating, but yeah, whatever. So anyway, moving right along. What you want to do is take up this elevator that we couldn't get into last time because of like having a small key, which we do have now, so that problem is blissfully not a problem anymore. And into here. I love the way that wall looks. It looks just I know it's really simple and textured, but it's awesome, still looking all the same. Anyway, so this room is pretty dang simple and pretty useful later, but uh, whatever. So right real quick here we have new enemies, these are torch slugs. Not difficult to beat. They take like three years to attack once you extinguish their fire by slashing them for whatever reason. Um, they try to run away from you, but also not hard to catch up with them, and since they're mostly in areas where they can't run anywhere, they're just not difficult. And even when they do attack you, they're not very strong. And for whatever reason, they drop magic. But, yeah, whatever. So, whatever. That little crystal delay right there is a switch that I do not believe we've seen up to this point. Uh, you can activate it by hitting it with your sword or with bombs, but if you hit it with, um, but if you activate it right now, you won't be able to get done what you need to do. So, just ignore it. And move this block instead. Move this block right here should be fine. Get on top of it. Jump over here. Climb on the middle fence. Slide over a little bit. And up we go. Now you want to activate it. But you want to do it with your bombs. And what you got to do is take a bomb, drop it right there. Climb up here. That'll activate the switch, extinguishing the fire. You climb up this metal fence. And up you go. If you try to do that with your sword, you will run out of time long before you get anywhere near this fence. And you will probably burn. So, yeah. Anyway, that'll bring me to a very, very interesting room. One of my personal favorites in this dungeon. A giant maze room. This maze is awesome because it has boulders in it that turn at right, at, uh, right angles for no relevant reason whatsoever. They're also smart enough to stop and turn around once they hit you. Why they wouldn't just finish you off by rolling, I don't know. But they don't. So, I guess we'll just be happy about it. Whoa, buddy, calm yourself. Anyway, so what you gotta do in this room is find two captured Gorons, uh, get the small keys that are in their cell, and then move on. You need both small keys to advance, so don't bother leaving without them. I suppose you could, and there might be some use to it, but it's really, it's better if you just get them both now. Because they're too easy to get, to waste time leaving and coming back. Anyway, so this guy will tell you something painfully obvious. If you're on fire, roll or swing your sword to uh, extinguish yourself. But most people just button mash when they're on fire, so that's really not something um, anyone need to know. So, whatever. Grab the small key. Moving right along. So, onward. Now, for some reason, every time I leave this room, I always get it by a boulder. Let's see if it does this time. Nope, I'm good. Indiana Jones style, baby. And the, there's where you need to go, but we don't need to go there until we have the other key. So, what you want to do? So, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, that went well. Let's see if we can't. No. Uh, that's not helpful. Let's see, roll on by, and here we go. The other trap horn should be right here. If you're watching, you can watch the, uh, the gate like glitches into the side of the wall right there. See that? Isn't that awesome? Oh, wait, dang it, messed it up. It's kind of hard to do, but whatever. This guy tell you something even more painfully obvious than the last guy. If you see a door that's about to fall by wiggling, you move out of the way. Duh. The only relevant thing he does tell you is you can destroy these doors with your bombs. So, yeah. Anyway, get his small key real quick. In just a second, I'll tell you kind of something interesting about falling doors. Um, but, um, I'll tell it to you in a little bit here, because there's something i got to commentate here in a second that I don't want to interrupt, so. Um, yeah. So, take your two small keys, go over to this hallway, and open up this door. 
And if you need him from the boulder maze, there are some recovery hearts right there, but I'm just going to ignore them because I'm only missing a fourth of the heart. So what you want to do here is first hit this little eye switch with your arrows. As you know, no eye goes unpoked. And go in here. This will bring us to a very small but not irrelevant room, which has... Come on. The dungeon map! Yay for us! Alright, so... And it locks us out for whatever stupid reason. Anyway, so what you gotta do now is go into here and we get another Indiana Jones themed um, trap. Which is right... Okay, let's get out of the lava link. Right here. A wall fire that chases you. Now I'm running for this, I'll tell you that thing about falling doors. At my grandma's house for the longest time, she had this door with no hinges on it, so whenever you tried to open it, it would just fall on you. And I hit my head so many times as a little kid because of that stupid door. It now is like an inside joke with like every one of my cousins and uh, lives on infamy. Yeah, in case you cared. <laughs> but I hit my head on falling doors so many times, so if I see one of these falling door in here, I'm going to destroy it just out of vengeance for that one door. Anyway, so kill this little slug dealer, get back here. And drop the bomb right here. Now I'm tell you she has a Gorn's voice, so just ignore her. Fall down. You can grab the um, fence wall to break your fall if you need to, but or you can just hear the awesome sound effect that I like so much. Anyway, going over here, if we let this Gorn out, we get a nice little halfway point between um, uh, he the top of the maze and the bottom down here. But it's, it's almost sort of useful, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's more useful later when you have to get back to the boss room where Dorama and I was, but whatever. He'll actually tell you something relevant right here. He'll tell you a trick to beating the mini-boss that we'll be seeing later. Um, you have to use the Gorn special crop on it, so... Yeah. Awesomeness. And he'll be on his merry way. We'll get our small key and be on our merry way. I love the way Link kicks those uh, chests open. It's pretty awesome. I stay pulling my sword out. And up we go. Now, something I should mention here is I love the the way they use the maze. I mean, it was useful not only as a maze, but also they use it by going on top of the maze. I thought that was really clever. Yeah, really, really clever. A good use of the uh, room. But I guess it's just me. So now this guy's respond. Kill him again real quick before he comes pain for us. Now let me just remember something real quick. It's a over there. We blow this wall up real quick. I believe this is where it is. What? There's a golden scatola here, but am I scatterbrained about it or something? Um. Hmm. You know what? I'll figure that out later. Because I don't feel like getting my notes out real quick, because it would take me a minute to find it, so whatever. Moving right along. Gosh, I've been saying that a lot lately. Be careful not to fall, because if you do fall, it's a long walk back up here. And, uh, yeah. You know, in fact... Um... In case I do fall, I'm gonna cast Fair Wars Win. Simply because I don't want to get back up here if I fall, and I haven't actually shown myself casting this spell yet, so... There you go, Fair Wars Win. It'll put itself back at the door, the last door you came out at, which is over there. Uh, yeah. Right along, kill this guy. Come on, die. And I think there's something we can blow up here, but I'm not entirely certain. Oh, no, actually, I can't believe it, I think no. Yep, no. Anyway, I should have gotten the magic that guy dropped. Whatever. Alright, moving over here. Um, over here. Kill him. And over we go to the Gorn. Hello, Mr. Gorn. Okay, what's your secret this time? Oh, there's a tip for um, a puzzle later. I will get into that puzzle when I get that puzzle. But whatever. So I think that's quite enough for this video. We got like. What was it? Six small keys in this one part, or four, or something like that. Yeah, it's probably more like four. Don't worry, I got the number six. Um, 
so yeah, next time we'll be heading deeper into the dungeon. I don't know if we'll be able to finish it, but I am hopeful. Um, pick that up, Blink. Thank you. Um, I'd like to finish it for sure because, um, yeah, I've been here a while already. But yeah, I guess we'll be doing that then. Sorry my commentary is so crappy. I actually have a splitting headache right now and I can't actually figure out why I'm recording. So, uh, like I said, sorry about that. It should be cleared up later. Anyway, see y'all next time.